In this video, we demonstrate how to integrate with Blade Logic server automation and extract data for further consumption by other workflows using XSLT and XPath. The subsequent workflow depend on the execution of the prior. For this reason, the data needs to be manipulated. We are using advanced XSLT as well as the for loop activity within Developer Studio. In addition to this, we are also leveraging token in a special capacity. As you can see in the infographic, we execute the API calls against Blade Logic, retrieve data from the Blade Logic objects, and then format the data in consumable XML. Based on that result, we then initiate further API calls and generate an overall report that we then export for other folks to use. In this scenario, we want to retrieve the activity of a server based on a dynamically created server list. We generate a new workflow, provide the documentation details, The result of the get server list is going to be the data that drives the subsequent execution of get server activity. We leverage the for loop activity, initialize a overall report context item with an empty node. This is very important as we want to have a report that consolidates all the individual job runs. You will later see how this will be filled with data from the individual run with inside or within a loop. Next, we retrieve the dynamically generated server list this is the basis for our for loop. And inside the for loop, we execute the workflow get server activity. Get server activity has a result for that particular run. And our job at this point lies in preparing an overall report. For this reason, we are going to use a special function of our token within the XSLT to add each report to the prior result. We loop through all the items that we retrieve from Blade Logic. We generated this workflow in our prior video. If you want to know how we have done this, review the prior video. Computer system is the input for our Git server activity. And the individual result will now be written in a different context item as I don't want to overwrite the job result or the result from the prior API call. So this is the job result for the individual server. This result needs to be added to the overall job context item that contains information for all the servers. Now here is the advanced transform that we're leveraging. We start off with an empty sample. You see our server list is empty at this point. The token that we add is our job result from the current API call. And here you have to keep in mind that this token contains now not a string, but an XML structure. This is something that you cannot accomplish with regular XPath or XSLT. Only HM Orchestrator has this built-in capability to add an XML construct to an existing XML structure. 
we copy from the root content all the nodes under servers and insert then the XML structure of the current job run using the token. Add it to the end and as we run this it will add the job to the existing re result. So as we execute the workflow, you see we get the server list. It's a dynamic input for our get server activity. We extract the result for each run and add it to the overall result, our job result, and then export that context item so other folks can use that overall report. If this was now a little bit too fast for you, just rewind the video and watch it again and then do it again. It doesn't hurt my feeling if you just go back and watch the YouTube video several times in order to grasp the concept of the token. And as you can see in the result here, we have now a root node called servers and for each server we have the jobs listed. We can use the tree view to represent the data in a hierarchical manner. It's easier to read that way. You see here for each server we have individual results nested within that server element. Add this to the output as documentation. This is good housekeeping.